Hi everybody, so another day of development stuff. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get to working on ICBM again. I know we haven't really done this for a while, and to be honest, I have actually been working on this during the week. I made a couple recordings, but I decided to scrap both as audio issues and other things, and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, as for the week, uh, streaming sort of went okay. We got some viewers, not a lot, so I'm not sure I'm going to continue doing that. I'll try it again next week and see if we can get people actually to watch them. Now the streams are going to pretty much be these recordings, but live, and that's pretty much it. So uh, first things first, I'm working on ICBM. Uh, Phil over here gave us some new textures for the landing pad, so we're going to go ahead and implement those. I have them on my desktop right now, and we'll go ahead and get these guys grouped up. And we'll go ahead and drag them into the asset folder here. And then we'll go ahead and see what they look like. Actually, you know what? What's really quickly, before we add them, see what the old one looks like so we have a comparison. So go ahead and launch that. And that's sitting there, that's building everything up. Additionally, I just remembered, uh, so there was a, a video where I was trying, where I was going to show off what the project I've been working on for class. Uh, I forgot I didn't actually do that. So I'm going to really quickly just show it. I won't be able to show you the functional version as uh, I have been unable to get the emulator for Android to work on my computer. I can get it to work on my cell phone, but I have no way to show the cell phone at the moment. I've been told there are ways to capture the screen from the cell phone device to a computer, but I haven't figured that out at the moment. So the only thing I can show you is what it kind of looks like. And uh, hopefully, maybe down the road, I'll show my development process on this uh, uh, app in particular. Um, eventually, by the way, we are going to do some more Android development as part of modding. Um, I plan to make two mods, if not more, for mods. Uh, the two I've currently got planned are a control system for Redstone devices and other things, so you can open your phone up and do things like trigger missiles, trigger gates, doors, uh, automated systems, maybe even get some stat relays about what's going on in your base while you're offline, and even maybe some alerts so you can get like a message pop up going, hey, you just ran out of iron for your automated system or your mine just completed. That way you know to log back in, your, in the game and, or your server and pick everything up. Uh, the other mod is just going to be basically the in-game wiki book, except on your phone. So that way you don't have to open up the in-game wiki on your computer or a website or even an in-game. You can just pop your phone up and go, oh yeah, this is how you craft this device. And that will be something we do plan to do. That one probably will happen before the other one, just because of how simplistic it will be. Uh, anyway, so this is what I am working on for my class projects. So what's been taking up a decent amount of time is I have no familiarity with Android, so I have to spend a huge amount of time learning this. Uh, I can't launch the app, but what I can do is show the part I'm working on. Now, I'm not going to show the whole app thing because I'm not sure which parts I'm allowed to show and which ones I'm not. But uh, Activity Courses is what I've been spending my time on. Uh, this is a grade book is what we're working on. And we'll actually show the preview here. There it goes. Uh, so there's not really much to look at. It's unfortunate that a lot of this stuff is generated, so it'll generate a table of classes down here. So you get an idea of the class, it would be like Comp 201 or ing like 150 then you'll get the name which will actually say like Eng english uh, 101 or something like that and then you'll get a grade value which is calculated then you can click that and then it'll take you to assignment views and everything else that's what i've been working on i mean it's not impressive it's hard to tell from just these gui things uh, i got no way to really show off i think i might have a screenshot yeah let me let me let me go to camera uploads here let me take a set of screen so that i don't show off all my pictures do, 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 do. Yeah, but I think there is one. Yeah, here we go. Yes, this is a earlier prototype. Now, the uh, current version does have a little bit better display and actually is clickable and highlights and everything else, but that's kind of what we've been doing. Yeah, not very impressive for the kind of stuff I work on when it comes to mods, and then you go over to Android, and then, yeah, not doing major work right there. But I got to learn the system, and that's a good way to start. Although I'm picking it up rather quickly. Oh yeah, so uh, I don't have my rain mod on here, so total downfall. Probably should re-add it. I was working on the nuclear explosions earlier. I thought they were bugged out, but it turned out I was just using the wrong warhead type. Also got a lot of the renders working too for uh, JSON, so most of all of the missile renders are now uh, functional via JSON system. Let me actually uh, fire off a couple and see if you guys can notice the difference. There should be literally zero difference between the old version and the new version, but functionality backend wise, 
there's huge major changes. Um, all the missiles are 100% customizable now. You can change the HP, their flight. Well, actually, you can't do the flight yet. You can change the HP, size, how they render. You can change the models out. Skins uh, can be changed out too. Uh, multiple skins will be coming soon now that we got the JSON system working. Um, you can The holding angles are actually a little bit better. It looks a little nicer. Unfortunately, the third person, I, Minecraft's got a complete opposite from third 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 person to first person. First person you get something like this, and then third person you get something like this, and it completely looks different. But other than that, this stuff is working really well. Um, I had a spot over here where I was testing. See if I can find it real quick. This is where I really need a mini map mod. So I can find my testing location. And I'm going to assume it's... I want to say it's over here, but I'm going to probably say I lost it. It's not a horrible thing. see something over here. It's a little unusual world generation there. Yeah, but that just looks like normal land, though. I think I might have actually fired a region missile out of my mistake earlier anyway, so if, even if we find it, it's probably not even there. But uh, we do have actual rendering now, so oh, apparently I can't place through snow. I need to fix that. But so yeah, you can stick us in here, and this is completely JSON driven now. It, every single part is JSON driven, so if somebody wants to make another missile, they can put it in here, and it will is decraftable. So if you take the engines off and the warheads off, uh, well, they're supposed to actually. Huh, it's not updating. Oh, well, well. So I was about to show like how that testing worked. I think there is a synchronization problem between the server and client, because the, the other launcher or the other crafting table, which is this one right here, has the same problem where it's it's not wanting to craft. Actually, this is having placement problems. There we go. So yeah, this one, uh, if I grab the missile out of this, and you put it in here, it doesn't actually render. This is a synchronization problem. It's one I've actually known about for a while. This one synchronizes, this one doesn't. I'm actually throw that in there too, so I can fix that later. Uh, so what we want to look on, work on it really quickly is the launcher pad. I know it's not a high priority to get this stuff worked on, but eh. We got two north edges now. Weird. So let's just go ahead and get a, this placed out. Let's get south edge. Now once again, some people don't understand this sometimes, is uh, these actually are optional. These were literally added just for decoration. I've actually been considering throwing them into military base decor when I go to transition them. If that ever does happen, all you have to do is install military base decor and I'll set up code to transition the block IDs automatically. That way uh, you don't have any problems actually solve the corner. Southwest corner. Oh wait, I already picked the southwest corner. Now I want to get these transition to connected textures here eventually. Um, that way you don't have to have a specific type. But I will leave the specific types probably in here just because uh, I know there are people who like to do really weird things with their builds. And maybe you want to have like two of these back to back. I grabbed the same block twice again. These naming conventions are crap. I gotta want to blame myself on that one too. Yeah, there we go. So this is what it looks like currently. It's not too bad, so we'll take a screenshot just so we have a comparison. And I'll go ahead and close this. Since you can't reload uh, resources in-game. At least not from the folder. You can do resource packs, but I'm not about to do that because that's a lot of work. Also it takes forever to load anyways, so it's easier just to relaunch the game. So assets, ICBM, uh, textures, blocks. And it looks like the naming names are exactly the same, so... Looks like Phil knows what he's doing. See, so yeah, replace nine files. So yeah, there's nine files. Cool. And yeah, so we'll go ahead and start that up, and we'll see what the difference is. Now he said he what he he did is he made the changes in order to fix uh, the connections on the edges. So I assume we're going to see a little better handling on the corners, which is the usually the main problem with the connected edges. And then we'll do some more things here later. I, I do plan to kind of play around more with the decorative blocks. One of the things I want to do with ICBM is spend a huge amount of time just giving you guys aesthetical changes. One of the reasons why we're doing the skin changes for the missiles is even though we don't have a lot of the features and functionality in the back end yet, so you can't do a lot of the st cool stuff, 
at least I can do is give you the guys the ability to customize the way your missiles look and get your own custom skins uploaded. Uh, I'll probably figure out some way to do some code so you can take a um, texture file from your client, upload it in the server, and it'll cache in the server and then redistribute itself to the client. So that way everybody in the area can see your texture. And then you can bind that texture as your default texture for your character. That way, anytime you make a missile, it'll auto default to that skin. That way you can do things. Now, of course, I'll leave it up to server owners' the discretion to turn that feature on and off. And then as the ability to also delete your textures in case you upload offensive things because I know the first thing somebody wants to do when they get the ability to do custom skins is usually paint it to look like a giant you can pretty much use your imagination from there um yeah that's going to guarantee be done that way uh, the thing I'm hoping people really do with the skins is just do like military theme stuff decorative things uh, we're probably going to throw a few of our own uh, skins up on there too uh, so you'll see things like a golden missile skin, diamond missile skin, um, different military themed ones. So you'll see things like American flags, Russian flags. Uh, we'll try to get a variety on there. We'll also try to figure out some ways to um, optimize down what we require to get the skins to work. Because the last thing I want to do is uh, put like 50 skins per missile in there and then take the uh, ICBM file size from the 17 megabytes it is currently all the way up to 50. I don't want to turn into uh, Pixelmon, which has like a half a gigabyte mod file which is pretty redonkulous but although they have a lot of models though so i'm going to try to avoid that as best as possible and uh i'm not noticing a difference maybe he just changed the interior texturing that's probably what he did so we got the, we got the screenshots so we'll go ahead and load these guys up looks like i need to clean this folder out again because it's taking up forever to load so go ahead and uh crop these down so i can compare them side by side so go ahead and crop. Yeah, that's what it looks like he did. He did the interior. I can actually notice the difference. So this is the old one, which I'm trying to crop and I'm failing at it pretty bad. Okay, so put the old one here, put this one here. I'm not really noticing a difference. I mean, the one on the right does look better, but I can't tell if that's conclusively that it actually has been changed or... Yeah, because you... The pattern is different. So you got a, a sharper pattern on this side over here. It's missing on this over here. This one looks a lot more consistent. This one's got some inconsistency. The odd thing is the inconsistencies on this one actually made it look unique-ish a little bit. But it does leave it to be a little choppy. And it's it's hard for me to notice because I it, it looks like concrete to me. My brain doesn't process the uh, the pattern. But I can see that there is a difference between the two combination wise this one looks more random this one looks a little bit more consistent um, well, I may just take both of these and throw these up on Twitter and just ask a vote which would people like so let's go ahead and save both of these Okay, um, and we need to say that this is a new one, so this is new, and then rename this guy old, that way I knew the difference. And then we'll pop them both on Twitter real quick, because that's, I guess, the my only way to figure out which one looks better. Um, just misspelled that oh well I'm not gonna fix it 
Okay, so we get this implemented. I'm going to just keep it because it does look more consistent. And some people do like consistency. But if ever there's a raise of the case where the old one does look better, I'll keep both of them. And then what I'll do is I'll throw them both in the military base accord later. And I'll call one launch pad A, launch pad B. And then it'll just be a slight cosmetic difference between them. I also kind of want to do some cosmetics where I change the color of the edge pad here. I know people love to have different variety on this one. Although... It, It'll get a little complicated because I don't want to do a whole bunch of block IDs and you only have 16 metadata. So we'll probably have to do static tiles in order to get that to work correctly with an ISBR to select tag. Well, actually, we don't need an ISBR for texturing. The ISB, although if we didn't use an ISBR, we could uh, take this trim piece here and make it a separate texture. And that way you didn't have to duplicate everything. We do rotation and fancy, really fancy things. There's a lot of cool things. Actually, you know what? I may end up using an ISBR um, just because I can get rid of a lot of the extra work on making the trim pieces here. So the corner, for example, I could just overlap two pieces, although that probably wouldn't look good, but I can figure it out. I may just do baked textures here later. That's all another option where I can combine multiple textures together in memory. And it's something that I am considering doing for the ICB missiles. For example, say I wanted to put an American flag on this. Rather than <clears throat> actually pre-making the texture with the American flag on it, I can go, okay, this pixel area is where we want to stick it. And then I just go ahead and merge the two textures together. So texture the American flag and then one of the missile skin. And I, that will save me a lot of work because what I can also do is then take that American flag and say, okay, you want to paste it on this thing or you want to put it on this thing or you want to put it on this thing. Then you just duplicate it over. And that is something I can do in RAM with texturing. Um, anyways, um, Gotta figure out what we're gonna work on next here. Didn't really plan this episode out at all. I mean, we got the JSON stuff done. We got a few other things done. <clears throat> um, other news I can say, we're working on the uh, updates to the newer versions, by the way. Uh, so several mods have already been updated to 112. I gotta re-update them again, though, because of forge changes I actually broke the uh, updates I did make. But um, there's three mods from the single block series that have been updated to 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, and 1.12. I basically did 15 updates for three mods, so I did five each. And I get to rinse and repeat that for another 10 of them, so I get to do 50 updates over them this week. Yeah, a lot of work. Um, and then eventually we'll get to doing ICBM here. Uh, the plan is to start on porting ICBM sometime next month to 1.8. And just to kind of get the groundwork laid out, not to do an official port, because what we're going to do is we're just going to prototype and test and experiment to see what's going on by the month after that. So the uh, the seven month, I believe is uh, August. Yeah, so by August, we'll have maybe a prototype uh, 1.8 version. September is actually when I want to get a 1.8 and 1.9 version completed. And then more than likely, we'll have a 1.10 version out by then as well. Um, 1.11 and 1.12 will take a little bit longer, especially 1.12 was going to be a pain for transitioning volts engine to because there's a lot of things that need or were changed and missing uh, a lot of problems with the fluid system that got changed over um, a lot of little things that have to be done uh, there's a high likelihood that sometime here in the next couple weeks i'm going to make my own fluid system here because they got rid of the old one in uh, 112 and moved it to a slightly different system that is just going to break compatibility between versions and i want to try to get as much compatibility as possible that way, if I make content for 1.7, I can then just quickly port it to 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 11, and 12 without having to do too much work. Potentially no work whatsoever. Um, anyways, I guess uh, I guess we can just sit here and test uh, and check for bugs real quick. So we did um, port a lot of this stuff to JSON, as I've already noted. And I got a lot more to work on JSON. Like, a lot of these modules here need to be transitioned to JSON. I wanted to do that before I started on the update, but the likelihood is I'm just going to go ahead and update, then transition them, then backport as I go. Um, so we get the cake missile here. I always love using the cake missile to test with because it's one of the few non-destructive missiles we have. And it also lets me test uh, a few different other pieces of functionality. Um, so I can test um, the tile placement. So we have a tile system, which I just fixed here yesterday. Uh, the rendering does need a little bit of work on. The missile's a little deeper into the into the block than it should be. Um, <clears throat> a lot of other things. Like you can see it almost a lot more over here on this one. It's not quite rendering properly. The nose of this should be on that spot. So I'm going to have to translate it back a little bit and do a few other things with it. But this is working rather well. And I still got to shoot my feet with this. 
Um, the item renders look a lot better than they used to be. Uh, as I've already put a screenshot of this one, kind of looks like the alien spacecraft from Men in Black 2 that lands re really early in the beginning of the episode. Uh, the small ones don't look as g good. Or Hold on, I dropped the wrong one. No, that's the right one. Yeah, some of these other ones don't look as good as items. Uh, I gotta work on it. This one, for example, needs to be translated up a little bit more because it's not rendering properly. And the same thing with the uh, the standard. A uh, thing, by the way, we I also did uh, with the standards is they are now shootable via the rocket launcher. Uh, only if in dev mode, though. So I can actually fire these and I can test these a lot quicker to ensure that things actually are working. Why are these pigs taking radiation damage? Oh, there they go. Might want to up the radius on that thing. Uh, I'll sit here and test a few more of these, like we'll test the arrow one. But with the ability to fire these, I can sit here and I can test larger distributions quicker without actually pulling out the launchers and everything else. The launchers, by the way, do work now. Uh, I know a couple people were testing the various versions ahead of time, like the JSON versions were not done yet, but somebody went out of their way and started... Oh. Well, we broke something. Um... Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what we broke. So there's my... What the... F okay. It's not the rocket launcher that's doing it, even though the rocket launcher is really borked. It's, it's one of the items in here. It's got to be... Yeah, it's got to be this thing. Yeah, so there's something wrong with the launcher rendering. Did it just rotate? It's weird because it's not breaking until you get to a certain point. I wonder if it goes away once I stick a missile in the tube. Yeah, okay, so I think I know what's wrong with the code. Um, we'll probably, open, yeah, there we go. We open up the console and there's a whole bunch of problems. Um, so missile turned out to be null. Okay, so here we go if missile doesn't equal null. A really basic problem. How apple fries change the what? Oh, apple flies. Okay. So yeah, we figured out where that problem is. So that's a good thing we were sitting here testing this because now that problem disappeared. Go ahead and take the missile back out, and it's gone. So what what's going on with that problem? Is it would start the push matrix, then it would null out, and the pop matrix would never get called. So, yeah, it's always important to have the push and pop matrices fire all the time, because if they don't, you end up with problems. I probably should put a try catch around this whole thing. I don't see where else I could have a problem with this, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Even though technically the render system should have its own, uh, own problem or own catches for this. I just don't feel like running into a problem where somebody complains that goes, hey, we're having um, an issue. By the way, for those who don't like the idea of there always being a lot of try-catches, uh, try-catches do not impact the runtime of uh, methods when you add them. So it's actually better to add them than not add them. Um, the only time they impact performance is when you crash, because of course then the method's going to go, okay, how, how many try-catches do I have, where they're at, how does it flow, and it has a lot of logic that it figures out where everything is. But it only checks that once it crashes. At least that's how I've been told it. Um, the reality of it is I have not read enough of the Java documentation to definitively say I, I know the answer completely. Uh, so what else we got to test? Uh, we've already tested kind of the various things here. I still got to spend some time working on this. Um, the standard launcher will go ahead and check that to see if that has a similar problem. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, the thing with the standard launcher, by the way, is it has its own render code for the missiles. Although I am working on trying to optimize the code down so that way there's only like really one place where things are being rendered at. 
a lot of things are now being redirected back to the main render code. So there's a one real main render code that does all the missiles now. The uh, only exception to this is the crafting table. And of course, yeah, as you guys notice, there is some render issues with the standard missile. I still haven't fixed these. I guess we can work on these next. I know last time we worked on ICBM, I left off by saying I didn't really care to fix it. It does have to be fixed eventually. It looks like the standard missile launcher is working. Uh, let's just go ahead and check. Yeah, we're good here. Open up ICBM. I'm going to take a look at the code just to make sure. So ICBM, content, launcher, launcher, standard. So standard has its own uh, render listener. And it looks like it's doing pretty good. So there's a uh, check for the missile. It already checks for not null. If it's not null, then it checks to see if it has a recipe started. Now the reason this has its own listener is because it's one of the only tiles that has a custom recipe system in it that does a really complicated render. I need to move this over to JSON, that way people who actually want to craft their own missiles can start to craft them, and then I'll move the recipe code over to JSON too. That way not only can you implement your own missile and the way it renders when being crafted, but then you can customize the recipe required for crafting. Um, although with the recipe, uh, I am going to enforce some flexibility in them. So if you want to make your missile out of, say, rebar or pipes or something, it's going to have to be able to support any metal type. And what's going to happen is in the recipe, once it's completed, the missile will figure out how many of those pipes you used, what material they're out of, and then it will calculate weight to actually distribute the uh, offset of the missile. So that way, if you put a big engine in it, but then you made it out of a really heavy material like obsidian, then it's going to be really slow to accelerate. It's still going to work, so I'm not. I'm never going to get to a point where you make your missile out of something and it will never work. You'll just have this really slow missile. After all, I am doing engines in the game that don't make sense, like charcoal engines. Those aren't even a realistic thing, but because it's Minecraft, I've added some unrealistic and magic-based engines. So yeah, we'll get this transition. So let's... um. Let's go ahead and just kind of work on getting the fins rendering properly on this. So I'll go ahead and hit save and exit, and then we'll finish off with that because we're at 27 minutes, and I'm kind of just doing this while I wait for food to cook as I'm slow cooking chicken. The sad thing, the only thing i got to do to pair with it is ramen noodles. I, I really need to go to the store. Uh, so let's think. Oh, yeah, so it's content is where we need to work on this at. So content missiles standard, and then somewhere down in here, if I remember correctly, we were working on, yeah, so there's a body and then there's a base. Everything should extend base, but for some reason the body is not rendering with the correct uh, textures. So render only, render only, parent render mode. So it is parent rendering, but it's not applying the new texture. I wonder why, or maybe it's we we uh, register this the same texture twice. No, because it's default fins, so that's not it. Unfortunately, my dog is wanting to get outside. Hey, one second. There you go. Door's open. Yeah, my dog hasn't figured out she can just stick her paw in the crack of the door and open it. Because I don't actually shut the door. I just kind of slightly shut it that way I don't get sound echoing and various other things but the dog will then stare at the door and then whine at going like I want out and not figuring out that the door is indeed open um, so yeah this makes this works so it's got to be a problem with this here so let's go let's go take a, a trip over to the engine which I was in here earlier I actually did a, a quite a bit of work on um, various things here. There's actually a new system for the parts where you can use an array to actually define them and you can use for loops to define multiple parts. We actually can see this in the uh, the small missile here. I spent a huge amount of time working on this. So yes, yeah, so this is where the custom crafting is for the crafting table and in order to facilitate this I actually build up some new code so you got an array so you can define this and it actually just makes life a lot easier because you don't have to put comma separation. Um, the comma separation will eventually be obsoleted because this is easier to read in and it by far is just easier to work with than the uh, previous version. So we got that. And then of course it supports for loops now. So if you have multiple parts with very similar names that you need to load in, you can just do this. And the only thing you can inject right now is the number. Um, there's nothing else you can really inject at the, this time because 
the code is pretty primitive and I'm probably not going to take it much farther at the moment. Maybe here down the road we'll do a lot more with it. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention with uh, the missile render. Uh, so you remember how I was having problems with um, rotation on a lot of my models? Well, I decided that because that I was having an issue, I just went ahead and added something called rotation order. So you can actually define what order you want rotation to be applied because the missiles, for whatever reason, were not rendering properly. I actually have another video that I may upload showing that I was having extreme difficulties trying to get the missiles to work with via JSON because when you applied roll before everything else, it screwed everything else. So as soon as you had any kind of roll on your model, it broke the model. Then if pitch was applied before yaw, yaw would just stop working. And I didn't understand what was going on because for our guns, because we did the same thing with our guns, if you didn't apply roll before pitch, then before yaw, then nothing wanted to work. And it just doesn't make any sense that the entities would render slightly different than the items. But because of that, I added a way to set the rotation order that way. If there's ever a problem, you can just pick how you want to do it. Now, it only does support three rotation orders, and there's only yaw, pitch, and roll. You can put yaw in twice. I don't recommend it because it's just going to screw your stuff up. They will rotate twice, but you can do it. Um, you can also use parenting if you wanted to get more than a couple rotations out of this. There's a lot of other things you can do with this to make it function, although parenting is what we're trying to fix right now. Uh, so go back, going back to the engine because I got sidetracked there. Uh, so we want to go to the client. Um, JSON, not models, because we don't want to work with the model data. We actually want to work with a render then states and then the model state is what we want to take a look at so the model state was actually gets called to render things even though it's not actually a model it is a model render system and you also got a text to render as well uh, so here's that custom system by the way it's really really basic you just call the order there there's nothing complicated about it unfortunately it is a slightly i think it actually does take a little bit longer than it should to do um rendering i might change this from a string to an integer system or to a byte i actually byte mask feels like a really good way to do this uh hopefully java optimizes this for me because in other words i'm wasting cpu cycles uh okay so here's our parent state here so parent state just calls render parent dot render if else if parts equals null parent instance of model state I don't get what's I feel like this code down here doesn't really work I think this is what's getting fired when we actually code things which then we'll call the method we are literally in, I think. No, actually, it doesn't. Um, there is... Well, there's not a slight problem with this. Actually, this is okay-ish, I guess. I think it does work. So what we want to do is um, go ahead and load up the game. And we want to get only a standard uh, missile rendering. And then we want to see what's going on with why the texture isn't binding. Uh, it could just be it's not loading properly. There's a lot of different variety. But the code, as far as I'm looking at it, looks fine. Because this... Uh, basically renders separately from the main render well not quite fully separately although it really should but uh it applies all of the scaling rotation everything then renders the parent then renders the child component which is what we're currently in so we get the texture binding but the texture binding isn't binding for this i guess so where's our standard missile It may be that uh, our texture isn't binding because that's what's going on, what it feels like. Because the parent object, of course, is rendering the default up here. Render type, yeah, render type, so, like, everything's good. So parent, texture ID, parts, render only parts. 
I wonder if the render only part thing is what's breaking. Let me go back to the model state. No, that's right there. To get data dot render. Where's data? Oh, model data. Okay, that really needs to be renamed. I'll do that real quick. Rename code occurrences model data. I would say that also could be a problem, but I'm pretty sure that uh, the get model system actually works really well. <laughs> There's get model twice. I like that. Yeah, so that all works. Because I'm pretty sure it's making its way through there. So go ahead. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a new world. I'm actually just going to go ahead and wipe out my old ones. That's why I'm at it too. We probably had some decent test environments for those, but... Uh, I need a new world and I just need to junk the old ones every so often. Speaking of junking things too, I need to get a new microphone, but uh, financially I can't afford one. The only reason I'm noting that is I'm staring at the one I've got and the duct tape is starting to fall off of it. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I don't want to buy another roll of duct tape either. Although I need to, because I need to build a ventilation duct to keep the heat and my computer off of the computer. Uh, what was I... Oh yeah, so we want to go and get a standard missile. Just grab that, and then we want a launcher because we kind of more or less trying to get the launcher. Well, the launcher is also the easiest one to kind of test with, as I don't have to hold the missile or kind of throw it out or something. Although... We could just test it by throwing it out on the ground, but this works too. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. I also need to kind of work on the closure box of this. There's a lot of things that ICBM just flat out needs to, to have. Anyway, so go ahead and do this, and then we just want to hit debug lines. So we're now inside the render method. We got our texture data. Uh, we'll see what our texture data says. So yeah, this fins default, and it looks like it's working out pretty well. It found the correct cached location. Uh, model looks good. Bit of a delay there. Now what the sub-rendering does, by the way, um, is if you're a sub-render, it completely ignores any of the parent's uh, applied render system. This is to prevent uh, duplicate uh, scaling and a few other things that just don't apply correctly. Uh, like trying to rotate repeatedly actually can break rotation. I'll be implementing a system around this here later. Actually, I just want to go down here. Okay, so now we're down in this state. So yeah, we got a model state. Render parent is false though. What are we rendering? So I think we found our problem. Render parent's true, yet it just notes it's false, so there could be a read issue where render parent isn't being read incorrectly. Um, however, parts is also null? What? Okay, what, what are we in? So we're in a model state right now. Parts is null, render parent's null. We have a render order? Which is yaw then pitch. Okay, so we're rendering the entities what's going on. Okay, so that's not an issue. I think I've got it figured out. Okay, so now what is our what are we? Model ID, ICBM standard missile. ID is body. Okay, so yeah, we're in the correct uh, object now. At least I think we are. Where's our, where's our thing here? Oh, I know, we're right here. So there's body, but then there's base. What is going on? 
So entity refers to base, which for some reason we should have just been in, but we're not. Okay. Okay, what are we in? So we're in base right now. Okay, ID is entity. Okay, so I think we're now in the correct object. Okay, so we're applying everything. I might have to code a new system for this is what I'm starting to think of, like I might have to do. Okay, let's put a thing here. There we go. Offset supplied. Okay, now we're getting to the parent state object. We're still at render render parent false, okay. Parts equals null. So I think this whole entire structure system is wrong. Because what I think just happened is we're skipping the parent and we're rendering the whole thing for some reason. So what we want to do is we want to go, okay, if parts equals null, so that's saying like, hey, we don't have any of our own parts, so we, we still want to render the parent. So if parts equals null, then we want to grab and we just want to yeah, and we know if, uh, well, actually, we already know if parent state is a model, so we just want to do this. Um, I have a feeling like there's an important spot where that came into play, but we'll find out if it broke something else later. So let's go ahead and remove our debug lines, and we would just want to see really quickly if it made a difference visually before we go through the code. Um, no. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Um, hmm. So we know it's going to run. I can't think of like exactly how to fix this. Or did I not, not reload? Yeah, it's reloaded. So technically how this is supposed to work is the entity. Yeah, I actually, hold on, we need to reverse this. I actually just remembered how this functions. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> How this works when it goes to render is if the base object, which is what we're in, so if we're in the entity, um, it, it will act as the base. If it doesn't have its own model, doesn't have its own texture, it's going to render basically everything that the base actually is. So it's going to apply its texture, it's going to apply its rendering down here. Then it's going to skip the base, and then it's going to go straight to rendering its parent object, um, which is right here. Yeah, we're not getting that behavior. So you see we get basically the same junk regardless of how we change that logic. Um, hmm. Okay, so what we want to see is if we get here. Yeah, we get here. Even though our own render parent is null. So if we don't have parts of our own, Model state. 
Yeah. Render parent. Yeah, it looks good. And we go through here. Uh, I hate when this stuff actually slows down. This is why, how you can tell things are interacting with the graphics card a little bit much. Okay, that exits out there. So we get our texture applied. So what is our texture data? So yeah, we're in the default render. So that looks good. And then we render the object. So this is the main body rendering here. So what we need to figure out is what's wrong with the fence. So we don't really care about uh, what's going on there. We want to know what's happening with our fence. Okay, so here's our fence. It's getting applied, so it, it acts like it's working, but then when it goes to render, it's not. The only thing I think it may be happening is we're getting, um, when the body goes to render or something, we're getting a little bit of variation in it. Okay, hmm. Could be the part render order maybe. So let's click this real quick and we'll see if the parts are rendering properly. And unfortunately it's going to take a little bit of while to step down through because, well, render code does this. Okay, so parts that are supposed to render is accept fence. Now, I have a feeling that that accept part just doesn't work. Let me open up the file. That actually is something we didn't actually bother to look to see if the, the formatting was correct. Yeah, that would actually break it, I think. Must have been something I was toying with that uh, I wasn't going to use, and then I decided, you know what, that's just dumb. So let's go ahead and hit play so we get clear out our error debug, and then uh, do that. I, I should probably create a procedural document of how to debug these next time I run into them, because it seems to be the same common errors. Almost always it's a formatting problem. But we just spent the last while trying to think it was a code problem without verifying that the format was correct. Um, this is where validation would be really heavy. I do actually plan to start validating the parts and I'm the ideal is when we get done loading all of the textures and models, or at least we get done with the models. We're going to go through and go, okay, this render requires that these parts be present. And it goes through and it goes, okay, the model contains all the parts. But what happens is if you don't have a part contained in there, then it's going to start going red flag going, hey, this model is missing uh, several parts that should be in existence for the render to function. And that way we know for sure that something's wrong. It'll go, oh, yeah, you don't contain this, you don't contain that. That way we know for sure what's actually broken. You know, what I actually don't really get is uh, why is this called Fen Small Silo? I I have a feeling like the naming convention a lot of the models given to me by Morton are just absolutely foobard. Probably should fix them. Actually, let me rephrase this. This model was made by Dragon Lord, so I have no idea why they're named this way. Speaking of which, I actually need to go get the, an updated model for the, sta for the standards. I think Morton made a, an updated version before he kind of more or less decided he doesn't want to do anything else. Although he hasn't exactly told me that, but he hasn't exactly shown up either. There we go. We got the it working now. So yeah, that was just a formatting error. 
Anyways, we'll go ahead and close this video off, and I'll see you guys later. What's probably going to happen here next week is I'll try to stream daily between 1 and 4 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I'm going to try to shoot for one as best as possible. I'll announce on Twitter right before I start streaming, so just keep track of Twitter when you go to figure out if you want to show up or not. Uh, we'll probably be working most of the week on SMB mods again. I'm trying to get as much of them updated before the 30th. I can't tell you why I'm trying to do that, but uh, I'll tell you on the 30th when I, it actually comes around that time. Um, anyways, so that's that's doing pretty well. I, I think I need to clean these textures up a little bit more. I definitely need to clean the model up. That's where I'm hoping that uh, Morton did finish the updated version of this model. Because the version that Dragonlord made is up here in the nose cone. There is like almost 10,000 geometry pieces that absolutely need to be fixed. And uh, we also, I think, have four or five different new variations of the standard one that we can implement that uh, I don't think Morton have finished, but I may be able to get somebody else to finish them for me, which it will work out pretty well. But uh, that's it. So I'll see you guys later.